Hey guys, Brandon Molzan here with Togan's Fly Shop. Today I'm going to be tying up some chronomids using some blended techniques and uh, some wing buds as well. For today's tie, I'll be using Togan's size 16 curved nymph hook in 2x gap. For that hook, I always pair um, a size 2mm or 564. Today I'll be using Togan's tungsten in brown magic. For my blended thread combinations for this fly, I'm using UTC-70 in olive, as well as UTC-70 in red. You can also use different shades of olive, as well as uh, chartreuse for any of these red budded greens. Uh, for the wing buds, these shore fishing goose strips, uh, goose biots, I got these from Trout Waters in Kelowna, just absolutely amazing color. The dark brown looks exactly like the naturals. For the rib section, some dark copper Togans wire. They've got this in an extra small size as well as a small size. It is great stuff and a little bit easier on a pocketbook as well. So go ahead and start this fly out by tying in your gills as you usually would. Um, I use uni floss for this, um, just white, and then uh, slip the bead up over top of that. And then you'll lay your base coat starting with red color. This is going to give that uh, red butt of this fly. And you'll notice me always counter spinning my thread after a few wraps. That just helps to flatten out the thread. Helps keep these bugs really slim and uh, very uh, controllable taper when you, when you build that up. With the wire, I always put it on the um, far side of my hook, and then uh, I try to keep it as straight on that hook shank as possible as you're wrapping the thread up. If there's any um, deviation in, in that wire, it does show through, and I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so if, uh, if I'm fishing any of these chronomids, they better be perfect, or else I, I won't fish them with as much confidence as I usually do. With that red thread, you bring it all the way back to the uh, bend of the hook, and then I give a couple of wraps behind the wire to start out that first segmentation. I gotta tell you, a recent fishing outing that I had with this particular fly, um, I'm sold on these wing buds and uh, the blended technique. It has brought my uh, chronomid game to a whole nother level. Put uh, these blended olives on my line and uh, I kid you not we had over probably 70 fish to the boat that day uh, it was non-stop and uh, my boat mate there he was like hey what are you using after a few uh, caught fish and then uh, we put on one of these on his line and it was uh, indicator down moments the rest of the day and then with your uh, secondary thread, uh, you want to make sure to flatten that thread out as much as possible as you work your way to the base of this hook. And then I do leave uh, some gaps to really help let that red color bleed through. And then as usual, you want to build up a nice taper. I've got to be honest with you, a lot of my chronomids don't see daylight anymore because I do love these blends and I love these... Uh, these goose biots, these wing buds. If uh, if I'm fishing these, I'm fishing them with confidence. They look exactly like some of the naturals that I've pumped. And uh, in my mind, they catch a lot more fish. So yeah, they take a little bit longer to tie, but I promise you, they will catch you some fish and they will uh, catch a lot of fishermen's eyes as well. Uh, they really, really are a unique little chronomid and I love this pattern. So you'll take a couple of those goose biots uh, and just tie in the tips of them. You can tie them right on the underside of that hook. And then you can either trim away the pointed tips or just wrap them back with some thread and make sure that they're nice and, uh, and covered. And then for this last little portion of the fly, just build up a little bit more of a taper leading up to that bead head. And then I give it a securing whip finish. And we're going to get that, uh, that wire rib up along this bug. 
with these chronomids as usual. We're going to aim for seven rib sections. Um, you can just fold those goose biots forward, try to keep them out of the way. I love using a, uh, a whip finish or a half hitch so you don't have to worry about that thread. You can just focus on getting the wire nice and evenly spaced. Give a couple of wraps in behind that wire and then one in front. And then you're going to helicopter that wire out of there as usual. And then here's the tricky part. You want to build just enough of a taper um, to get both of those buds up to that bead and leave yourself just a little bit of a ditch so that the bulk of that thread doesn't build up too much. And then I give a couple of wraps on each of those biots in behind them and then one in front and then another wrap behind. And then with your whip finisher here, this is where it all comes to, to fruition is uh, about three, three, four wraps. And that just hides um, the portion of those goose biots that you trimmed off, making it nice and uh, beautiful presentation up to that bead. And then as usual, we'll finish this fly with some durability. You can use uh, Sally Hansen's, you can use crazy glue, you can use UV resins. Um, it is gonna catch you some fish. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Again, it's Brandon Molzan with Togan's Fly Shop. Hope you guys were able to learn something today. Try out these techniques. Happy tying, happy fishing, and we'll see you on the water.